Hello and welcome back to Man V Film. It is time for the Vinegar Syndrome halfway to Black Friday sale. And I've got some recommendations for you. Some things that I think you may like. Some things that I definitely do like. And I want to champion these titles. Of course, this is my list of things that I'm going to recommend. I want to know things that you want to recommend. So remember to drop them in the comment box below so you can enable me to buy more and maybe some other people as well. And don't forget to hit that like button because it really does help the channel. And we kind of want that. So let's jump into the Vinegar Syndrome website. Sale is coming May 27th. Let's jump into the first title that I have here, which is Dead Heat. Recent title. I don't know if it's going to be on sale or not, but it's an outstanding 4K. It's an outstanding movie. It's hilarious buddy cop movies, but one of them happens to be a zombie with a limited time scale to find the man that killed him. It's got a wealth of extras on this and it just looks amazing. And see it being at that 80 minute runtime, it's one of those easy to throw on movies. It's just so enjoyable. And it's one of those ones that's got better for me the more that I've watched it. Next up, we have Scanner Cop. Now, unfortunately, the Scanner Cop 1 and 2 set has gone, but you can still purchase them individually. These should be in the sale, and I would strongly recommend picking up both of these titles. I've only brought up Scanner Cop just to give me a talking point. Great movies. The first one is a proper interesting thriller with some utterly jaw-dropping effects, which is just amazing. The second one is ludicrous but it has Patrick Kilpatrick as the bad guy and some of the scanner offs are just <sighs> so hilarious and awesome. Utterly amazing. Next up, we have one, or if not my favourite um, release from Vinegar Syndrome so far, one of the favourite, uh, The Beastmaster, a movie that I loved as a kid. It was on TV all the time. I thought it was fascinating, funny, scary, uh, like a better version of Conan for me because he talked to the animals, Dr. Doolittle kind of style. It's funny, it's weird, it's got a great image of a vampire and a take on it which is really exciting and thrilling the beastmaster is an absolute banger of a film next up we have the 4k disc of ticks uh, another one of those that just looks amazing from the 90s a creature feature i'm not sure if this one's going to be in the sale or not if it is pick it up while you can the package is amazing it's a slip cover within a slip cover a group of wayward kids go to a weekend um, in the, the countryside to kind of bond with uh, people that are looking after them, counsellors, when wouldn't you believe it, killer ticks appear and just cause carnage. It's fun, it's throwaway. The extras on this disc are really what push it above and beyond. If you've been waiting, wait no further, pick it up. You will not be sorry. Next up, we have got the hilarious Tough Guys Don't Dance. Now, this is a polarising movie because it's not well made. It takes the film noir kind of uh, vibes and completely skews them. Now, I don't know if it's incompetence on the director's behalf, a misguided attempt to create something and just tonally miss the mark, but this movie is so enjoyable and i mean so enjoyable it's hilarious it has amazing lines that have stuck with me it is almost self-parody at times like i said incredibly funny possibly unintentionally but it doesn't matter because it's huge on the entertainment next up we have the televised terror volume one box set I love all three movies in this set. I think they're very different and they're very great. So we have Are You Alone in the House, a kind of thriller about a girl that is stalked by um, a lot of uh, men in her life who objectify her. And you get the city 
ramifications at the start of the movie and then build up to that where all the men are really um, heightened in the way that they are touching, crowding her, talking to her. Great. Calendar Girl Murders. Love it. Um, someone is out there killing models. And so far, they have killed a couple. And we bring in our detective, uh, played by Tom Skerritt, to investigate Sharon Stone's in it. It's like an American Gialli movie. Incredibly fun. Child in the Night is a terrific kind of psychological thriller uh, with a young Elijah Wood. And I won't say too much more about this, but this is a great set. I am eagerly awaiting volume two. Another highly recommended. Another tonally off one is All American Murder, where Christopher Walken just rocks up and drops the most hilarious one-liners and then disappears for a vast amount of the movie. Um, you have a young man who is going to meet the girl of his dreams for a date, Charlie Schlater, and she dies and he is the prime suspect and he spends the rest of the movie trying to figure out what the hell happened, what's going on. Uh, Christopher Walken is the police officer who pops in and out of uh, the movie every now and again just to antagonise the situation and, like I said, drop some quotable lines and then disappear. Really good movie, pretty funny, again, tonally inconsistent, but I feel as if that adds to the film. Next up, we have well, the best VSC in... in, in my mind, and possibly the best uh, Tales from the Crypt episode, movie ever. Uh, the Grave is a wonderfully obscure southern kind of horror, thriller, noir movie. There's all these kind of things. It's got a wonderful cast. It's got a plot that I, I don't really want to get into because, well, you know what? It's best going into this movie knowing as little as possible. Look at the cast list. If that doesn't sell you, I don't know what will. The best VSA out at the moment. Next up, my favourite of the Gialli sets, Forgotten Gialli Volume 3, eh, which has the absolutely wonderful autopsy, or otherwise known as, as Sunspots, which is just a really eerie, atmospheric, wonderful. Murder Mansion is like a live-action Scooby-Doo movie. <laughs> <laughs> and I really do mean that, and I love it because of that. And then we have Crazy Desires of the Murderer, which is another kind of gothic horror one, which, um, yeah, really ticked all my boxes. This, for me, was um, the pinnacle of the Forgotten Gialli sets thus far. Highly recommended. Next up, we have Fade to Black, which is uh, every movie fan's kind of dream. A young movie fan comes into some money, uh, has psychological breakdown, uh, kind of attributes to the fact that he's going to dress up as famous movie characters and kill people that have bullied or got in his way or, or stopped him from being the person that he wanted to become. This is one of those uh, Vinegar Syndrome movies that's just great across the board. It nails the tone, it's got great performances and it just encapsulates everything about me except the colour aspect so far. And next we have Ladron de Tumbas, Grave Robbers, a Galindo Jr. movie that is very much like Friday the 13th, part six. Unstoppable killer, chasing after people. We've got a sheriff with an Uzi. Do I need to say more? It's incredibly fun. It's got a great cast. Um, and yeah, I, I think it was my favourite of the Galindo Jr. movies that VS released. Next up, we have one of the best surprises and one movie that I have constantly championed, The Caller. Madeline Smith, Malcolm McDowell. And the first half hour of this movie is the most perfect half hour of any movie ever set to film. It's just outstanding. The, the say, play... The way they play with each other in the opening scene is fantastic. We've got two characters, Cabin in the Woods. Malcolm McDowell turns up, says, can I use your phone? But there is so much subtext. There is so much going on. They obviously kind of know of each other. And you're never quite sure which one of these is more dangerous as they play these cat and mouse games that proceed throughout or continue throughout the film. 
It's got a crazy ending, which no one ever sees coming. If they tell you they did, they're lying. Um, and I've come to terms with that ending because the rest of the movie is just so damn good. Please, if you're thinking about anything or on the fence, this is one you have to pick up. Next up, we've got Blood Games, a travelling troupe of baseball players um, beat a bunch of rednecks and the rednecks feel that the only way to get um, a little bit of revenge for this is to rape and murder them. Silly rednecks. Unfortunately, they, they kind of <laughs> underestimate the girls again. They do it on the field, they do it off the field. you get an action thriller as these girls are just trying to survive against these um, crazed hillbillies, but it's so much fun. Great lead performance, great action. Yeah, this was uh, one of my favourite VS movies. Next up, we have Deadline, which is a Canadian movie, which is a, a kind of um, a story about a man losing his grip on his family and on his sanity. He's wrote a lot of movies and books and things, and he keeps having flashes of the horrors that he has created. So because we do that, we get glimpses to the movies that have been made depicting his horrific scenes. So we get the blood, the guts, and you get the emotional, impactful story to go with it. It's a wonderful idea, executed exemplary uh, very well, and I, I just I, I think it's great. Next up, we have Olivia, which is <laughs> a kind of gialli slasher, which is all over the place. Now, I Susanna Love plays Olivia, the lead character here. It's a movie where she is a damaged character because she sees her, her mother's death at the hands uh, of a punter. She is a prostitute at the start, working near Tower Bridge. We then, midway through the movie, after a brief love affair with the American, jump to a small town in America who have apparently bought uh, the London Tower Bridge and brought it there. And she is playing the same character, a different character. It has elements of Hitchcock around it, but it's most definitely within the giallo vein. It's an oddball one, but one I highly recommend. Next up, The Candy Snatchers. This is one of those movies that's going to just ruin your day. It's bleak. It's downright awful. The things that happen in it are shocking. It's distasteful. It's an awesome movie that just makes you feel icky watching it as we watch Candy being kidnapped at the start and the sheer mayhem that continues after it is just, um, it's one of those 70s movies that, trust me, is one of the best movies that Vinegar Syndrome have released. Highly recommended again. One that very few people talk about but I really liked is Unmasked Part 25. I kind of rip off of Friday the 13th it's guessing that this character may be become dissatisfied with the reoccurring role that he has in this world. Mindless killing that's unfulfilling to this character anymore until he meets a blind woman and falls in love. Now, it is kind of silly and it is um, kind of low budget, but I find that it really, really tickled my funny bone as a fan of Friday the 13th movies. It, it parodies it enough, but given it enough uh, fan service as well as to not be demeaning towards it, but creates a great story on its own. Next up, we have James Hong in The Vineyard. He plays the owner of, of a winery that has a terrible secret. We get a movie crew going there to shoot a low-budget movie, and of course you kind of know that these people aren't going to make it to the end as horrible things happen. Great effects, and James Hong just chewing the scenery and owning it at the same time. Next, we have Pledge Night, which I really liked as well. Of course, I, I'm recommending all of these. I liked all of these movies. This one starts off as a kind of college campus comedy for the first half, turning into a nightmarish uh, murder fest in the latter half. And it's kind of low budget. But I kind of like both halves of this movie and I feel they meld together really well. That turning point from comedy into serious danger and the bad guy is just awesome. Next up we have Mausoleum, uh, a title I got not long ago from good friend Daniel uh, of the channel. Mausoleum is a terrific movie um, about a family that's been cursed, uh, about a woman that is starting to be possessed by a demon 
very little of it makes sense. It's incredibly funny, deliberately so with the housekeeper, I think is hilarious. Um, the action is great, and there are boobs and plenty of them on show. Next up is Penitentiary, which is an absolute knockout of a movie. I love this one. Wasn't sure what I was getting. A black exploitation prison movie, and it's just so amazing. A young character ends up in jail. He can handle himself. He ends up uh, starring in a kind of fight tournament, and all the kind of prison trappings happen to him, but it's a rousing finale, a kind of crazed movie, and uh, one that I, I thought was kind of scary, terrifying, thrilling. I loved the main character, loved his journey. I uh, was really surprised by how much I really enjoyed this one. Next up, we have Raw Force. Do you want samurai swords, jade monsters, monks, the, the cannibal monks? Um, uh, it's just, this has everything. It's crazy, it's over the top, and it's incredibly fun, yet silly. Uh, zombies, cannibals, outrageous action, gore, copious amounts of nudity, and starring exploitation greats Cameron Mitchell and Vic Diaz. Raw Force is a movie that you just cannot describe. There's no point in even trying. You have to sit down and see this awesome monstrosity as it plays out in front of you. Next, we have Tragedy Girls. A recent one may not be in the sale as yet, but I love this kind of modern take on the slasher movie where it is social media that has encouraged the deviousness of these two girls to become, well, social media starlets or wannabes and murderers at the same time. It's so fun. I think it's just a terrific movie. I've got a full review if you want to see it. One from Fun City Editions that I just love, and that was Morvin Caller. We follow a girl whose boyfriend has committed suicide. She steals his novel, passes it off as her own, and just lives out the next few weeks of her life, not letting anybody know that her boyfriend has died. It's a journey of self-discovery. If you like those kind of movies, if not, it's still worth a try. It is a magnificently acted, uh, produced, directed film that's just an instant classic for me. And kind of last almost, we have Jeremy from Fun City Editions. The perfect encapsulation of a love story. It's not big, bold, over the top. It's um, small, it's contained, it's impactful and emotional. And it tells a story of these two people coming together and being kind of tore apart at the end of it, but the performances are great, the direction is great, I love the understated nature of this one, and for me it's, it's one of the stars of Fun City Editions. And last, not least, but if you're on Vinegar Syndrome sale and you're picking up a few things, you might want to look at the Blue Underground releases. The 4Ks, I can recommend them all, they're all fantastic, well worth picking up, if you get the chance, these won't be discounted, but if you're buying stuff and you're looking for um, some great films, then by all means, pick up a couple of these. They are pretty terrific. Personally, Vigilante is outstanding. Um, Zombie is great. Uh, the Final Countdown has one of the best audio tracks I've ever heard. It was just amazing. Um, and this is where I've picked these up. It's the cheapest way to get them in the UK. And yeah, that is it for me so far. That's about all the movies I could pick out. that I, I wanted to put more because there's more that I loved, but these ones are all highly recommended for me and I would love to know if you're picking anything up and, of course, what I should be looking at, what else I didn't have in my list. Let me know in the comment box below and I will see you next time. Man V Film.